What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be discussing two iterators from the Python Iter Tools module. So we'll be discussing count and iSlice. Count basically is an infinite iterator that will continue to count up from the initialized number. So if you take a look at the code, you'll see that count is initialized with the number 10. So we'll skip this line here. First we'll run this. And we'll take a look at here. We're going to initialize a count with 10 and save it to the x variable. All right, so now that we've initialized and created an instance, we're going to run count via this method. Now that we've uh, created an instance of the count object, what we're going to do is create an infinite loop while true. And we'll continue to get the or extract the next value from the infinite iterator. And we'll sleep for one second so that we can see the output. So basically, it's counting 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. And it'll count forever. This is an infinite iterator. Now, these counts can be good for if you want to keep a counter um, and you don't know beforehand how long count should be counting for. So that's one of the usefulness of a count. The other benefit of count can come from an infinite source of data. If you need an infinite source of data or you don't know beforehand how much data you're going to be needing, uh, count can fill in that void. Now let's take a look at some other arguments of count. Okay, so here count has an extra argument represented by two. Now this two represents a step argument. Basically, when you include a step argument, the count will start counting via the step argument. So if you don't have any explicit step arguments, the count will count by ones. But if you add a value to the step argument or insert a step argument, it will start counting by that step argument. So instead of counting 10, 11, 12, what happens is it'll start counting by the step argument. So it'll be 10, 12, 14, 16, and so on. So if I run this, first we initialize the uh, count object or create an instance. And now what I'm showing you is we can uh, use a for loop because this is an iterator and we can loop through x. But remember, this is an infinite iterator, so this will go on forever unless we forcefully stop. So 10, 12, 14, 16, etc. So this is the step argument coming into play and forcing the count to increase by the step argument. Now the cool thing about count is that it continues off from where it left off. So here we left off at 34. So now if I run this, you'll see it'll start off from 34. 36, 38, so this is very useful when you need to create a counter that will frequently start and stop. Now with count, the step argument allows you to step backwards as well. So here we're going to be counting backwards. Instead of adding one, we can also subtract one. So if I run this, it'll count down from 10. So essentially we're counting down. Now the only problem here is that if you want to count down to zero, you can't. It will actually continue to count down because this is an infinite iterator. So it will continue counting down below past zero. Now let's just stop this. But if you want to count it down to zero, there are actually other ways you can do so. And that's using iSlice. All right. So what is iSlice? iSlice basically allows you to slice an iterator. Now with list, we have a built-in slicing functionality. But with most iterators, such as the one above, you can't actually slice them. Now with iSlice, you can actually slice an iterator. So something like range 10, which you can't really slice until you turn it into a list, can be sliced using iSlice. Alright, so we have an example here. We have i and iSlice. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take this range 10 and we're going to slice the first five values. So essentially, we only want the first five values. So let's just print this out. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're slicing the range and only asking for the first five values. 
Now the earlier example would count. We want it to count down only till zero. So we start off with 10 and we're counting down. So we created a count object that's counting down. But remember, this is an infinite iterator. So what we need to do is we need to use iSlice. Now with iSlice, we can specify the amount of elements we want to get back. So in this case, since we're counting down from 10, we only want 10 elements because we want to count down to zero. So let's just run this and see it in action. Now I am not using time.sleep because it's only 10 elements, so you should see the output pretty quickly. There we go. From 10 to 1. Now if you actually wanted 0, I guess you can just do this, 11. Run this, and basically from 10 to 0. Now there are other features or functionalities of iSlice that allow for more granularity. So here, in this example, we have two numbers within iSlice, or two arguments. This argument is going to represent where we want to start off, and this represents where we want to end. So essentially, we want the 5th to 10th element of this counter. So this is very similar to slicing, but we're slicing an iterator that is not a list. So once again, this 5 is where to start, and this 10 is where we want to finish. So we want to extract the 5th to 10th element of count. So that should be 5 to 0, I'm assuming, or 5 to 1. Let's just run this. All right, there we go, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, one more built-in functionality is the step argument. Now, with the step argument, what you can do is you can do the same thing with count. You can step by a certain amount. So we're going to be controlling the output and only outputting every second step. Or in this case, we're going to be outputting 5, 3, 1. So basically, the step argument resembles the earlier count step argument. And works in the same fashion. So if I run this, we should get back 5, 3, 1. And that's what we do. We get back 5, 3, 1. So this was a quick introduction to Python iter tools, count, and iSlice. I will see you guys in the next video.